a massive blob of dangerous toxic waste known as the elephant's foot, a deadly heart condition plaguing those born after the disaster, and terrifying hidden hotspots of toxic radiation. These are disturbing Chernobyl discoveries scientists fear discussing. The elephant's foot is one of the most disturbing remnants of the Chernobyl disaster. It's a large mass of graphite and concrete that formed underneath reactor number four after the explosion. When the reactor melted down, the materials that were inside started to mix and solidify, creating this massive, oddly shaped toxic lump. It got its name because from a distance, it kind of looks like an elephant's foot with large bulbous structures sticking out. The problem with this thing was that it emitted terrifying amounts of radiation right after the explosion. In fact, at the time, it was one of the most radioactive spots on planet Earth. People working to clean it up or get closer to it received lethal doses of radiation just by being near. In the years following the disaster, it became clear that the elephant's foot wasn't just dangerous for people who were close by, though. It also had an ongoing impact on the environment. The radiation affected the soil, air, and water, and it made cleanup operations even more difficult. For decades, scientists have been worried about how much more radiation might still be leaking from it. One of the most disturbing medical effects from the Chernobyl disaster is a condition known as the Chernobyl heart. It's a congenital heart defect that's been found in people born after the disaster and it's believed to be caused by the radiation exposure that their mothers experienced while pregnant. The condition causes the heart to develop abnormally, which of course causes a long list of problems, including heart failure, and unfortunately the number of youngsters born with this condition is believed to be much higher than originally reported, and the full extent of it is still not fully understood. A lot of them were born to parents who were exposed to radiation during the aftermath of the explosion. But it wasn't just the immediate survivors of the disaster that were affected. It's also the generations that followed. And it's not just the heart that's impacted either. Other birth defects, cancers, developmental issues, all been linked to the radiation. And some scientists worry that this is just the tip of the iceberg. The death zone around Chernobyl, also known as the exclusion zone, is a 30 kilometer radius surrounding the site of the explosion. After the disaster, the area was deemed uninhabitable because of the extremely high levels of radiation. People living within this zone were evacuated, and the area has remained largely off limits ever since. Even today, it's not entirely safe to enter the zone. Some parts have been deemed safe enough for tourists to visit, but there are still areas where radiation levels are high enough to cause serious health risks. One of the most unsettling things about the death zone is how nature has taken over. Wildlife has returned to the area, and some species like wolves and wild boar are surviving in a landscape that was once populated by humans. And while on one hand nature is healing itself, scientists are concerned about how the radiation might affect these animals over time. More on that in a bit. The death zone is this eerie place though, where time seems to have stopped, but the dangers lurking there are very real. Even though the exclusion zone is mostly off limits, the real fear is all the hidden hotspots of radiation, areas where radiation levels are significantly higher than the surrounding environment. They can be found in random places like under trees and buildings or in the soil, and they're incredibly difficult to detect without specialized equipment. Some of these hotspots have been measured at radiation levels so high that a person spending even a short time in the area would receive a deadly dose. The worrying part about these hotspots is that we don't know exactly how widespread they are either. Even scientists studying the area have been caught off guard by these invisible pockets of radiation. In some cases, the radiation is buried deep underground, and it's nearly impossible to predict where it might show up next. In the long term, these hotspots could cause serious health issues for anyone who ventures into the area, even if avoiding the exclusion zone. See, one of the scariest things about radiation is that it's invisible. You can't see it, smell it, or taste it and it can seep into the environment in ways that are hard to track. When the Chernobyl reactor exploded, radiation was released into the atmosphere and spread over large areas of Europe. While we know that radiation has a very real dangerous effect on human health, the real fear is how it can stay hidden in the environment. It's in the soil, the water, even the air, and you might not even know you're being exposed to it until it's too late. Today, certain crops in areas surrounding the exclusion zone still have radioactive traces. And scientists worry that it could affect the food supply for generations. It's not just the immediate aftermath of the explosion that's dangerous, it's the long-term, ongoing exposure to low-level radiation that's still having an impact. And the health consequences of radiation exposure might not show up until years down the road. The liquidators 
were thousands of workers, soldiers, and volunteers who were sent in to help clean up the Chernobyl disaster in the weeks and months following the explosion. They were tasked with containing the radiation, decontaminating the area, and preventing further damage. These people were exposed to high levels of radiation, and the effects were devastating. Some developed cancer, others suffered from organ damage, and a lot of them died in the years following the disaster. They were often given little to no protection from the radiation they were being exposed to. They were seen as disposable and sent in without proper safety gear or even adequate training. For years, their exposure to radiation was downplayed or just outright ignored. It wasn't until much later later that the real extent of their suffering came to light. It's said that over 100,000 liquidators were exposed to harmful levels of radiation. And in the years since, a lot of them have developed serious health issues. The liquidators story is definitely one of the darkest parts of the Chernobyl disaster. This is a group of people sent in to clean up a mess that they had no control over, paying the price with their lives. One of the ongoing concerns surrounding Chernobyl is the contamination of water. After the explosion, the reactor's cooling systems failed and large amounts of radioactive water were released into the environment. This water ended up in nearby rivers, lakes, and the groundwater. There's been efforts to clean things up, but the problem is far from solved. Radioactive particles are still found in nearby rivers and lakes. This means that both the environment and people living nearby are still at risk of exposure to radioactive water. The issue with radioactive water is that it can be difficult to track. The contamination can spread silently, affecting big areas of land and water over time. Radioactive particles can linger for decades, slowly working their way into the environment. And as I already discussed, this can and has led to long-term health issues. After the original concrete structure known as the sarcophagus started to degrade, a new newer, larger sarcophagus was built around the Chernobyl reactor. The goal was to contain the radiation and prevent it from spreading further. The new safe confinement, as it's called, is this huge structure designed to last for at least 100 years. Now, while it is a major improvement over the original sarcophagus, there are still some concerns. First of all, it's only designed to last a century, and we have no real idea of what will happen to the thing once it starts to deteriorate. If it fails, the consequences could be catastrophic. The new safe confinement is designed designed to keep radiation contained, but there's always a possibility of something going wrong. For example, if the structure were to collapse or crack, there's a risk of radiation leaking into the environment. The idea that we have to rely on this temporary fix for such a long-term problem is a bit unsettling. The wildlife around Chernobyl has actually been doing pretty well since humans have left, but there's a pretty disturbing side to that. A lot of the animals are showing signs of mutations. Some are born with extra limbs, messed up faces, problems with their organs. Now, it's not like genetic mutations never happen in nature, but the fact that these kinds of mutations are more common in Chernobyl than in any other place is pretty telling. Scientists think radiation has a big part in these changes, and they're worried that over time, this could cause some species to completely die off. Some mutations are small and hard to notice, but others are much more obvious, like animals with tumors, extra or missing body parts, or just high levels of radiation detected in their bodies. Some animals are still managing to survive quite well, though. It's just tough to say how all these mutations will affect their populations long term. But the idea that radiation might have changed the very genetic makeup of entire species in the area is a pretty scary thought. Finally, there are the phantom radio signals. These are mysterious, unexplained radio transmissions that people exploring the exclusion zone have reported hearing. The strange thing is, these signals often come through on frequencies that should be totally silent or unused. Urban explorers with radios have said they've picked up distorted voices or odd sounds that don't sound like your typical radio noise. Some even claim they've heard vague messages coming through. One theory is that this could be some kind kind of lingering electromagnetic effect from the nuclear disaster, but those who lean towards more paranormal stuff say the signals might be coming from the spirits of people who died during the disaster, trying to reach out through the radio. With all that said, I've been your host James, and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.